What's up, everyone? It's Tuesday, September 22nd. I am Paul Winterk, and we are live at 5. And I'm Beth Stevens. And we're joined, as always, by Caitlin Moynihan. Sorry. Hello. Hi, Caitlin. You guys. You're in a car. I'm in, I'm in my car because, <laughs> you know, when you live upstate, sometimes there's just no internet for an entire day. I mean, it hasn't happened that often. But today, as you know, we've had meetings. I've been in my car for meetings. And so I had to drive. 15 miles to interview today's amazing guest, but honestly, I would have driven because I adore her. Beth, who's here today? Did we lose oh. Beth? I'm gonna take Beth away because she froze. Today, <laughs> we have the, we have Tony nominee, Ratchet star, no, no. Harry. Tony, Tony winner. winner. Tony winner. Believe it. Winner. Okay. That's like, that's a fatal mistake, fatal mistake. She's Tony still Winter. a nominee, even though she won. I'm just saying, not completely wrong. But Tony winner, Winter. for but winner for one of my favorite shows and favorite performances, Mrs. Mears mm -hmm. in Philly Modern Millie. So I just want to be really clear about that. Tony Winner, Harry Tony Harris. Winner, she's here and she's in Ratchet with a D, not a T. I know you always say Ratchet. And it's ratchet. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, uh, and it's so good. I finished it. I'm so into it. She's fantastic. Uh, mm -hmm. Are we going to be able to bring Beth back in for the news? I Yes, we're going to go to top news. Okay, cool. So let's do some news. I I lost you guys for a second. Did I miss something important? Harriet so Harris is here, I'm Tony the, winner. I, I, I'm the one in a car. You're in a, you're in a, you should be fine. I have issues. Uh, yeah, things have changed for my connectivity. Anyway. I'm here at my desk, you're in your car, let's do some news. Okay, so the Zoom where it happens, not the room, the Zoom where it happens is doing episode two tonight. So episode one was Golden Girls with Alfred Woodard and Tracy Ellis oh. Ross and Sanaa yeah. Lathan and Regina King. Now they're doing Friends tonight with an all black cast. Amazing. Ready? Gabriel Union is hosting and listen to these, listen to this cast. Sterling K. Brown is Ross. Ryan Michelle Bethe as Rachel, Broadway's Uzo Aduba, I'm just owning it there, as Phoebe, Aisha Hines as Monica oh, Kendrick Wait, wait, Samson. wait, wait, pause. How many Emmys does she have now? Anyway, Like going. a thousand, like a thousand. Oh Kendrick yeah. Sampson as Joey, and listen to this, Broadway's own Jeremy Pope as Chandler. So oh, that's this adorable. is- adorable. <laughs> I didn't so know cute. that. <laughs> this is to benefit when we all vote, a nonpartisan voter registration organization. Today is voter registration day, so there you go. It happens tonight. I know, tonight. Beth, 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 I'm wearing, I'm wearing merch. You're, anyway, go ahead. You are wearing merch for voting. Oh, anyway, go ahead. And merch. this happens tonight at 9 p.m. Eastern. So check it out. The Zoom where it happens. Okay, well, I have to, this is also for we all vote. This is a, a West mm. Wing reunion that is yeah. happening. Um, this is happening October 15th on HBO Max. What they're doing is they're reuniting the West Wing cast, which is, of course, I think they're, they're mostly, aren't they all Broadway vets? I mean, well, pretty I much. Rob, has Rob Lowe, Dulé Hill, Allison Janney, Janelle Maloney, Richard Schiff, Bradley Whitford, Martin Sheen will do a reading of season three, episode 15, Hartfield's Landing. Now, I don't know West Wing by heart, so I don't know what that episode is, but I'm assuming it's a good one. Uh, of course, creator Aaron Sorkin will also be there and producer director Thomas Schlamme. Schlamme? Schlamme? I don't know if I'm saying Schlamme. his name right. Yeah. Okay, cool. Also, in between the acts, because that, that's a that's a writing term as well. That's not just a play Thank term, you. it's a TV, it's a script term as well. Oh, um, there you go. There will be there will be moments with Michelle Obama. You know this list. Michelle Obama, Bill Clinton, and Lynn Manuel Miranda. These are the kind of names. That Lynn gets, he's that's the level Lynn and Well, you know what I'm going to say? The Obamas have, and, and the Clintons have been in the West Wing, and Lynn is just obsessed with the West Wing. So that all makes sense to me. Beth, we knew him when. Anyway, we, this fall, we October 15th, all you West Wing freaks, I know there are many of you, can catch it on HBO Max. Okay, here's someone else who we knew when. Tony winner Kristen Chenoweth oh. has a new gig. She's going to star in a Netflix Christmas movie called Holiday. She's joined by Emma Roberts, Andrew Bachelor, and Luke Bracey. And it talks about two strangers who pledge to be each other's holiday 
for every festive occasion in the year ahead. I hope they're wearing masks, but we'll talk about that later. And uh, it premieres on Netflix on October 28th. So then I guess you can just watch it from Halloween through New Year's Eve and just, Kristen can be your holiday. I'm just amazed that Lifetime never used that title for one of the, anyway, I'm shocked. But anyway. Well, maybe they did, you know, you can't, you can't copyright a title. That's all I'm saying. Here, here's another great title, Dope Sick. This, this, this is gonna be very different. This is not a rom-com. This is no. a Hulu series, an eight episode Hulu series about opioid addiction. And it's, it's based on a book by Beth Macy. There it is, that's the book. And we found out Philippa Sue is in it, who we adore from Hamilton, mm -hmm. of course, and Amelie and other things. Um, and Stephen Pasquale is very lucky to have her. Uh, she will play Amber, a sales rep with Purdue Pharma, and she's part of the first team to sell OxyContin. So I think mm. this is, I think, I think, like I said, not a rom com. This is going to be, this is, stuff, gonna be yeah. a, this is going to be a good meeting. We don't know when it's premiering, but it's going to be great and she's going to be in it. Love it. Okay. I'm going to, I'm going to finish off on a downbeat here because we've got some bad news. Tommy DeVito, who was oh. one of the original members of the Four Seasons, has died of COVID-19. He oh, was wow. 92 years old. There he is with Christian Hoff, who portrayed wow. him in Jersey Boys on Broadway and won a Tony Award for it. And won it. a Tony like Harriet Harris won a Tony. That's and true. Just, just putting it up again. Harriet yeah. Harris was first because she's better. She's awesome. Not better, just awesome. Anyway, listen. Tommy DeVito was a native of Belleville, New Jersey. Of course, New Jersey, because Jersey Boys. He's, you know, he's probably adjacent, but we just love him. We love Christian Hoff playing him. And Jersey Boys has been such a wonderful treasure of the theater. There you go with the, the four guys. And um, he was born in 1928, and he will be missed. Of course, Bob Gaudio, Frankie Valli, and Nick Massey were the other three members of the Four Seasons. Wow. Sad news. I mean, like, yeah, but a, a grateful life. You know, I mean, yeah. but, but and, so and came to Jersey Boys with the well, other surviving it, members. I mean, it's so interesting to have your life to, to become like a compelling Broadway character. What an interesting, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, it's so mm -hmm. interesting. Um, okay, Beth, thank you for that. Before we get to Tony winner, Harriet Harris, can we do today in Broadway? We can. This is a big one on this day. In 1964, Fiddler on the Roof opened. Oi, there he is, Zero Mastel, <laughs> who originated the role of Tevya, won a Tony Award for it. Maria Karnalova, who played Golda, also won a Tony Award. Uh, actually, the show won nine Tony Awards and was the longest running Broadway show in its time. It was the first Broadway show to surpass 3,000 performances. It moved theaters twice. It started at the Imperial, right. moved to the Majestic, Remember when the Majestic had shows other than Phantom of the Opera? I don't, but, and it also nope. had, <laughs> it also moved to the Broadway theater where it finished its run in 1972. So it really ran for a very long time. 3,242 performances. There's Zero Mustel with the ladies. Let's talk about this cast. Uh, in addition to Zero Mustel and Maria Karnilova, of course, B. Arthur played Yenta, Beatrice Arthur, as she was known in the Playbill, mm -hmm. Austin Pendleton, the wonderful writer and actor and director, played Muddle, and Bert Convy, if you're as old as I am and used to watch uh, game shows in the 70s, Bert Convy played Perchick, <laughs> and <laughs> that Midler was a replacement for Seidel during the run. So that's how yeah. she was in there involved. Of course, it's based on the stories of Shalom Aleichem, and the, he wrote several stories about his most famous character, character Tevya the Dairyman. What else can we say? It actually won a special Tony in 1972 for being the longest running show. Oh. Get a Tony for running, which I think is amazing. It's been revived on Broadway four times. It's been produced around the world in many languages, including the most recent off-Broadway engagement of the Yiddish Fiddler on the Roof. There you go. Right, right. Directed by Mr. Joel Gray. Oh, miracle of miracles. All right. <laughs> Fantastic. Great job. Hey, Caitlin. Hi. Yes. Hi, Caitlin. I am here. Hi. Okay. Uh, will you please properly mm -hmm. introduce? I, I'll do it. Properly. I don't know what happened when I went away, but you messed up, <laughs> I think. I, 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 I messed up a little bit when you went away, Beth. I was thrown off. I wasn't entirely wrong, but. That's because you weren't alive no, to see she wasn't wrong. wrong. She just... It's fine. You weren't born yet. It's okay. It's okay. Exactly. Okay. <laughs> Will you please introduce today's guest. Thank you, Beth. 
Yes, I will. As we have said multiple times today, we have Tony, Tony Winner, Winner, Mrs. Harriet Harris. She appears in the just released new Netflix Ryan Murphy collab of Ratchet with a D on Netflix. She's in, I think, two episodes. It's scary, it's amazing. Y'all know her. She earned a Tony for her turn in Thoroughly Modern Millie. She has eight other Broadway credits that include Cinderella, It Should Have Been You, Present Laughter. Uh, she's been seen on screen in so many things, so many things, including Frasier, It's All Relative, Desperate Housewives. She's going to be starring in the upcoming series Atlantic Crossing, and she's going to be playing Eleanor Roosevelt, a character that, a person that she has played, I think, three times now, which is fascinating. You guys can follow her on social at Miss Harriet Harris. Leave all of your questions in the comments below for us to actually ask her later. And everyone, please welcome Tony Winner. Harriet Harris. Hi, Kate, okay, she uh, made up for it. She made up. I have my American Theater Wing cup just for you. Why not? American <laughs> Theater Wing. They <laughs> they they started the Tony Awards. We love them. Perfect, the perfect tie-in. A Tony winner should have an American Theater Wing mug. It was just to show Caitlin. Do you, do you have to um, throw that Tony winner thing around when you're out in Hollywood? No, it, I, I don't. I don't have to throw things around because it's, it's we're spread out here. So no, no, no. But you know, one time somebody said somebody was talking to me, and they said uh, I was working with him as a producer. He said, "Oh, who was that wonderful girl that won the Tony for your show?" And I said, "I won the Tony." For, it was, and he said, "No, but who was the wonderful girl?" And I said, "Well, that would be Sutton Foster." He said, "Yes, dynamite." And I said, "Yes." <laughs> but the, you know, the character actress matters too. I'm the one that's on Absolutely. your show. Absolutely. I'm on your show. But you know, it, 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 it is interesting, the, the divide between Hollywood and Broadway sometimes, because I, I was actually looking over your IMDb page, which is a thing that shows all your film and TV credits, um, and you have many. And, I, and IBDB is the Broadway version of that. But your IMDb one has a bio that does not mention your Mrs. Mears Tony Award in the bio. I don't know who writes those things. I don't. I I'm going to add it. I'm going to add think, it. Can you? Because I don't, I don't know. know. I'll does. try. I think in the Wikipedia page it says that uh, Christine Baranski and I are, are like best friends, and I think I really <laughs> am so fond of her. I think she's great. But how did we get to be best friends? And I tried to edit it once, and they said that I wasn't allowed to edit. And I thought, well, who wouldn't want to be friends with Christine Bransky, frankly? So I'll just leave it. I'll leave you it. You know here. what? That means thousands of years from now, people will assume you were best friends with Christine yeah. Bransky. It's a great, it's a great kept, fact. She kept me very well hidden. I'm part of her <laughs> very private life. I'm really in the inner circle. I am a big fan of yours, and I want to talk about Ratchet because I – and I'm a big fan of Ryan Murphy, and you've yeah. worked on a few Ryan Murphy shows. Now, you were on American Horror Story. You were on Hollywood. Yeah. You were on an episode of Hollywood, which I, I love seeing you on that as well. And you did, that was one of your Eleanor Roosevelt moments. Um, Eleanor went to the studio. It was fabulous. Uh, so great. They she rolled out the red carpet. Yeah. <laughs> um, is, I, I, I just, I get so lost in the, the, the visuals and the, it's first, it felt like an old, it felt like a Hitchcock movie, like in yeah. so many ways and um, maybe gorier at times, but it, it's just so, his shows feel so grand. I mean, it feels like, it felt like a Hollywood, a classic Hollywood movie with the costumes and the set and the lighting. And I mean, does it feel that way when you're on a set? It was so impressive. I think we, one of the scenes that really got cut down uh, in Hollywood, for instance, there were all these women at a luncheon and I couldn't believe how beautifully costumed they were and how gorgeous the room was. And in Ratchet, it was just so incredibly high styled and, and you know, so, yeah. so like point device, you know, it, it, yeah. it, uh, it, it was thrilling. And you walked in and you thought, I think I know who I am in this world. And Ryan, I think, is just great at that. He has a wonderful visual imagination. He's really, I, I don't have an enormous experience with him, but he's really fun to be with. And he's really fun. Yeah. It's fun to watch him work and watch his mind, you know, think of things and add things. And 
it, it's uh, and everybody is on board with what he wants to do. So he's a great leader. And well, it's I thrilling. I adore I adore him for loving all the theater actors yes. that I love because yeah. it's 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 just remarkable to see how many people he gives amazing opportunities in film and TV, because we all know 20 years ago, that wasn't the case for, th for theater actors to, to get those opportunities. Yeah. I, I, I feel like it was such a different, it, you know, it's always been true in London where you could do anything, but it got very, uh, very split up. And, uh, and I've been lucky because I have an unusual set of skills i guess but uh that sounds like they're really special they're not they just happen to be mine so i think i fit in a lot of different places but um and i think people are surprised when they see me in a different kind of world like they don't people don't know that i do theater or people don't know that i've done other things because they think that's what you do and that's what tends to happen of course even within the same kind of genre or world people think you only do something one specific thing so yeah so ratchet is uh i'm gonna explain this for the kids so just like wicked was about the wicked witch told the pre-story of the wicked witch from the wizard of oz ratchet tells of nurse ratchet which is a character in one floor of the cougar's nest who we don't know much about in one floor of the cougar's nest uh -huh. i mean you just know she kind of has a chip on her shoulder and She's clearly been through some stuff, and it's basically this whole amazing imagining of of what how she got there. And Sarah Paulson plays her, and it's it's mostly set in this uh, in the psychiatric hospital. Yeah. And what can you tell us about Ingrid, who is the character you play? Well, I don't know, like how much we can sort of say about who you are in it. I uh, I'm one of the patients. I want you know I want people to watch it and I want people to be surprised by all of us and yeah. and show up you know thinking I what's she gonna do and but I I was so delighted when I read it and uh, um, I think they'd kill me if I said anything although the show is out there now but yeah. you know we weren't supposed to say anything for a very long time and uh, I was. I was posting some paintings that I thought were sort of in the same uh, decade or sort of sort of isol sense of isolation on my Instagram. And then I thought, oh, I bet I wasn't even supposed to do this. Nobody said don't do that. But it's certainly not pictures of the shows or, converse, you know, quotes or conversations I had with people or anything like that. But um, it's very secretive. So I would rather not spoil it for people. Yeah. But every character is so well written. And sometimes it's just a look you get from people and you know immediately who they are and the way we were photographed, the way we were dressed, the insanely good costumes, the, uh, and again, the beautiful sets. It's just, and it's thrilling to see, uh, see people in different lights. And I think Ryan does like to do that too. I think he likes to say, you've never thought of this person this way. And mm -hmm. I have, and mm -hmm. I, I think it's, I mean, he's, he's brilliant at that, I think. Uh, uh, recognizing other aspects of people's uh, personality or what they might be able to bring to something. So um, I don't think he really puts his foot wrong. And Sarah Paulson, my God. I know. It's incredible. And, you know, she's actually a great example of, like, if you look at her incredible career now, Ryan Murphy has, you know, so many, you know, we all loved her in theater, you know, yeah. for, for many years. But if you really think about sort of what she's had the opportunity to do. And by the way, I want everybody to know, Ratched was like number one in like every country. Did you see that <laughs> over the over the weekend? Like every country, you know, Netflix has the rankings. It was huge. Yeah. I mean, people are people are eating it up. Yes, it must I be exciting. Suddenly everything on my Twitter feed was in either Spanish or Portuguese. And I thought, <laughs> well, who, I can't read anything on my, on my feed. It's just astonishing. <laughs> But it is, it's, it's exciting. And they, uh, you know, they, they really devoted themselves to it. You could tell at the time it was so focused what was going on. And, yeah. but again, Sarah Paulson, Ryan Murphy, he saw that in Sarah and yeah. saw that not only is she this brilliant actress, but yes, she can produce. And not yeah. everybody, just like some actors can't direct, some can or, but that's a specific thing. If you're not just a name, 
if it's not just a, I have a feeling that she was really, really working and, and, you know, learning everything she needed to know about how to produce. And yeah. she's going to, so she will be a phenomenal producer, you know, yeah. she's, it, it's, yeah. uh, but that's recognizing a different kind of talent in somebody. And I think yeah. he's just really good at that. Somebody, uh, somebody named Broadway fan who's watching this, it's a very generic name. We're all Broadway fans, but this person said, uh, Ratchet is the Sweeney Todd of Netflix series. <laughs> you know, but there, there we go. Why not? Uh, <laughs> I mean, it is, it is, it is gory. It is like, I love American Horror Story too. I mean, yeah. I, I just kind of, I kind of dig it. Um, do you like that sort of imagining? I love the creativity that goes behind sort of taking a well-loved thing and then sort of opening it up in one direction or the other. Yeah, I, I liked what you were talking about, about Wicked. And then you think about the Marvel series and when they say the origin story and yeah. that this has been described as Ratchet's or, origin story. And yeah, yeah. That she has such unlimited potential. One never, you just don't know what she might be capable of. And I think that will be really fun to follow as the years go by and, and as they propel into into her future and you see more and more of her. But the um, I I do get scared by things and I can't sleep afterwards. And I uh, <laughs> so there but I am also and uh, I'm drawn to things that are frightening. I'm drawn to things that are challenging anyway. I, but uh -huh. I don't really like to be um, uh, gratuitously scared, but I feel like the things that are happening in this show right. are there for a reason, and uh, yeah. and I don't think it is gratuitous. So um, right. it certainly is sometimes very violent and scary, and always so stylish that that that's unnerving yeah. too. I think that's arresting about it is that you can make these things like with Sweeney Todd look so good, yeah. and they they did it with humor and Sweeney Todd and that beautiful score and um, I'm yeah. very impressed with Ratchet's score. Isn't oh it? Oh my God, yeah. I mean, just the undertow of that score is just really kind of thrilling. And I just want to live, I, I want to live in Ryan Murphy land. Like, I don't uh -huh. know, I just love, I love just sort of immersing myself into his shows. I think it's, it's fantastic. And I like the extremes of what he can do too, that it can be something as dark as American Horror Story and then yeah. Glee or The Politician. Yeah. You know, it's just sort yeah. of like, it's it's not, he doesn't really, I don't think, I, I don't want to sound like I know him well, because I don't, but it doesn't, to me, of what I've seen, doesn't look like there's a lot of interest in middle ground. And that's right. another thing, like, I, right. if, if you're going to ask for people's attention, show them something different than they see all day long. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, and Ratchet is great at that right now, because it is, it's such a escape into a different world. Yep. So let's talk about, I, I want to know a little bit about uh, little teenage Harriet Harris down in Texas, who, who got, who fell in love with theater. You fell in love with theater when you were a kid, right? You, you went to I, Juilliard I, and. I, I was uh, a very withdrawn little girl and um, my father died and I, it hit me pretty hard and I became, I wasn't, I became very shy after that. And one of my mother's friends said, Eleanor, you got to do something about Harriet. She's just, you can't be shy in Texas. You can't be shy. Mm -hmm. And actually, they didn't say can't. My mother's friends don't say, but it's a better story. So I went to this <laughs> acting school as a child, the Casamignana Merry-Go-Round School, theater school for children. And I was terrified. And I just immediately loved it the wow. ability to get out of me and go into something else. It just, it's like opening a door in a stuffy room or something like that. It was just such a relief. And it just always has been, but it's also progressed to being that instead of just opening the window, you get to look outside the window and learn things about other people and things that I would be too shy to find out. And it's helped me a lot also to overcome this shyness. You still consider yourself shy? I, I think I'm introverted. I don't think I'm, uh, I, I can talk to people, but I'm not like, I'm not really um, a, a gregarious or an extrovert or, a, mm -hmm. but uh, it's, I, I play them on TV, but no, that's not, yeah. 
I, I found the, uh, because of the pandemic, because of how we're living now, I, I feel like I'm more of an introvert than maybe I knew, you know what I mean? And it's really interesting to see how introverts versus extroverts are handling this. Cause a lot of my extrovert friends are kind of like losing their minds about not being around people. And it's very easy for me to sort of, so what's it been like for you? Well, we've been, my sweetheart and I have been in the woods in Massachusetts. And so it, it, it's really isolated. And if, if he were a more frightening person, it would have been really scary. But, <laughs> but it's, uh, so we really only see people when we have to go to the grocery store. Yeah. Um, we've been using the time to work on his house. And it's, it's been a very uh, insular kind of experience, but it, uh, and we don't have internet there. Wow. Wow. No. That's like no. me today. That's me today. No it's internet. Not, you never have internet. It's not pretty. We used to have it, but it's gone. And I don't know that we'll get it back. And how is that for you? Do you, do you, it, it's are you... hard. It's hard, you know, it's and, hard. and, and, uh, but I do have my phone yeah. and, and, uh, uh, Matt's gotten a, a jet pack, so we have like 100 gigs where you have to go, does that mean I get 50 and you get 50? Or does that mean, you know, <laughs> how, how do we know when we're running out? And so uh, that's another reason I would decide to better watch Ratchet here, because we'll run out of gigs. <laughs> oh, my God. Because you're in California now. Yeah, so I, I have oh. Wi-Fi now. Well, okay, okay. You're like, I need a, for Ratchet's premiere. I need to be somewhere with Wi-Fi, so I know yeah, what it is. <laughs> so it just happened to be. It happened to work out. Fantastic. Uh, hey, Caitlin, are you there? I, oh, I'm gonna properly introduce this. We are going to take some fan questions. <gasps> I'm so happy. Thank you for remembering. Okay, so. Uh, Miss Harriet Harris. Uh, okay, Marisha. Or Harriet Sampson. Harriet Sampson Harris. It's there just so Sampson. many names. You know, <laughs> you commit as many crimes as I have. Uh, you a lot of names. Oh my gosh. Okay, Marisha wants to know if you. What is your relationship with the book One One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest? Did you read? Did you like it? when you first read it or did you like, do you have like a connection or not connection, but like relationship with the character of Ratchet before this? Well, first of all, I love that you think I've read the book because <laughs> I have not read the book. Neither have I. But, it's, um, oh, it's fun. Yeah, so maybe I will read the book since I don't have internet when I go back to the cabin, I'll possibly I'll read it. But, uh, oh my. My shadow, I've got a shadow coming across my thing. Yeah, I had I, I, I like so, some sunlight. I would like drama. to know what Marissa, uh, is it Marissa that thought mm -hmm. of it? I would, I would mm -hmm. be interested in what she thought of it, but, and, and would she recommend it? Oh, let's see. She says you should watch, you should read it. It's quite good. Oh. It's kind of right, confusing, well, I, but yeah, it's good. It was yeah, a Broadway think, play too. Amy Martin played Ratchet in the Broadway mm -hmm. play from Steppenwolf, right? But yeah, yeah, with Gary Sinise. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, I saw the oh. movie a long, long time ago, but I also thought uh, I don't really have to read the book because we're not in that time. No. Mm -hmm. But I do right. usually do a whole lot of research and mm. uh, and look at paintings and listen to music and read what I can read. And I think it's an important part of working. But this, it's it's a different decade and Ingrid, Ingrid doesn't live there. Mm. I'm in a very you know what hospital. though? Honestly, Ingrid could do a whole back. She probably has a whole back series in her too. She's oh, she's not alive. So. <laughs> next up, Ingrid the series. <laughs> Ryan Ingrid Murphy's next like project. That. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so Alexis would like to know. You've mentioned the costumes a few times, but Alexis wants to know what was it like being actually on set and stepping into that beautiful world that Ryan Murphy creates with the costumes and the colors and things. Well, they're so, the, for one thing, the sets are so monumental. They're enormous. They are as big as they look. There's no sort of like funny little, you know, aspect of that. It's really this dinky little thing. You, 
you do walk down hallways that had these beautiful floors. The doors are really there. You open the doors and sometimes you open the door and you see the crew, but sometimes you open the door and you see it, uh, this beautiful room that later you're going to be doing a scene in. And it's just, it's, it's a, a grand. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's an aspect of stuff that you don't really get to play with in theater. Sometimes mm -hmm. it looks very beautiful from what the audience can see, but not so much backstage. But this, you you know, we would find ourselves sometimes waiting someplace that was so lovely that I just thought, oh, well, I don't want to leave here, but I know I'm supposed to go over there and, <laughs> and do the scene. So it's pretty spectacular. And I, I, I'm amazed that a series that was in its first year mm. um, do that. You know, it's not like, well, now we've got some money and now we can make things look really like right, we want right. them. But the attention to detail in my costume fittings and um, the conversations about, I mean, Ryan knew what he wanted her to look like, but he also wanted to know what, uh, what additions and, and the, you know, brilliant costume designer who's worked with Ryan a lot. So they're on the same page and I, I should Love remember it. her name. She's just incredible. Um, so that, that is, uh, that's really terrific when you get to experience it because you just, that part of your job is done. Mm -hmm. And usually actors have to invest so much into thinking, well, this letter opener isn't really necessarily the one I would like to use, but that's what Pops gave me. So I've got to create an idea or a story about this so I can actually think about, mm -hmm. you know, using it later and what it meant to me when I bought it or something. The, everything is just sort of like, you know, that's what I'd have. You know, that's what this room would look like. And it's mm -hmm. just, so in that way, it's very, it's peculiar um, about, about 30% of what you have to do is, is done for you. Maybe you more. got to I, you, maybe more, but I don't want to say that because it'll sound like actors don't do anything. <laughs> you, you, you also you got to go into the creepy um, the tub room that well, I feel like it's an iconic ratchet moment now. I feel like that you got to like do anyway. People will see that, but you got to sort of be in some of the really cool moments. No, of the, I, I love it. That was a really fun scene, and yeah. you know to to get to do that have. Judy Davis there, who I so love yeah. and admire. And, you know, it's, it's just really incredible. And Charlie Carver to see him growing up, you know, yeah. and that yeah, is yeah. Right now. But uh, it, it's lovely to watch people's careers and, and sometimes you end up in the same room with them. Mm. And sometimes you end up in the same room with them a number of times, but uh, it, it, it's a one, that's a, that's a lovely thing. Um, yeah, and that was that great. Was fun too because of that, I love yeah. it. Amazing. Um, I think. Well, it kind of lit, led into the last question I wanted to ask was that Stephanie actually wanted to say that what was it like reuniting with Charlie Carver? Because yeah, the guys have that desperate housewives connection. Yeah, and when I saw him, I I just didn't realize who it was <laughs> because he's so grown up, and he yeah. was like smiling at me and. And then I thought, what a sweet young man. How lovely. <laughs> he has very good manners. And he's like, <laughs> it was like my it was like my grandmother in my mind of, oh, he's a nice young man. And but it, and then later, once I was home, I thought, oh my God, that's that's Charlie. And although we didn't have a whole lot to do ever together on Desperate Housewives, nevertheless, uh, we if I had not, you know, and of course he did have like you know, he, he doesn't yeah, he yeah. make on. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, but uh, I, I did think at the time, I thought, God, he's good with a camera and he <laughs> knows what they're talking about and how to do this stuff. And, you know, he has absolutely no kind of phobia or like embarrassment of somebody saying, you know, we need this for camera. Because a lot of actors will just go, well, that really messes me up because what I need is this. And it's just mm. sort of like, adjust. You know, he, he, he's just so facile and, and uh, I'm really want, enjoying watching him on the show. It's really oh, He great. can also, he can also be seen in Boys in the Band next week on Netflix. I'm so he's, excited to see it's that. It's so good. I saw I'm it. It's so good. good. It, yeah, it's fantastic. I mean, yeah. such an amazing group of guys in that. 
So mm -hmm. I, I think it'll be really, really spectacular. I just Amazing. want there to be, I think there should be like a, a Hollywood studio, maybe it's Netflix, with all of all of the, the Ryan Murphy players, including you, just, you know, with contracts and walking around, like, you know, like the Hollywood show, but it, it's like, just keep making stuff, Ryan Murphy. Bring, I love that he has like his like group of people. It's fantastic. Yeah. I think it's great. I like uh, that too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, why not? Why not? Yeah. Why not? Well, Amazing. Harriet, thank you so much for joining us. Thank um, you. Everyone needs to watch. Well, you can watch Hollywood too, but you have to watch Ratchet. That's the hot one to watch right now. But you know, they just live on. I mean, I mean people are gonna be watching these for the rest of time. <laughs> yeah. Particularly now. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. Just get lost get lost. And when because... you start yeah. again. <laughs> yeah. Thank you Amazing. again, Harriet. Thank you. I hope to see to you here. in person soon. And Caitlin, will you please take us out? Yes. Thank you guys so much for tuning in for another fun episode of Live at Five Home Edition. You can follow along where we get your podcast by searching for hashtag Live at Five and hitting that subscribe button. Taking us out today is a clip of Miss Adrian Warren singing I Miss the Mountains from the recent Second Stage Gala. You're welcome. I miss the highs and lows All the climbing, all the falling All the while the wild wind blows Stinging you with snow And soaking you with rain